I'm Sheila Bino, Nassau County Legislator for Legislative District 2. I'm joined here today by a, my, one of my colleagues, the Nassau County Legislature, Laura Curran, the Mayor of Hempstead, Wayne Hall, Trustee Lois, Lewis Figueroa, Housing Authority Chairwoman Andrina Wyatt, and Commissioner Max Rodriguez. In addition, I'm uh, Rosemary Olson, the Executive Director of the Hempstead Housing Authority is present, and members of New York Community for Change. And more, most important, we have residents uh, that are seniors living here in the village of Hempstead standing in support of this legislation. So we are here today to announce legislation that would require building owners and uh, of multifamily dwellings that are designated for senior and disabled housing to install backup generators to power the elevators. This bill is intended to protect the safety and the welfare of our most vulnerable community members, especially in times of prolonged power outages due to catastrophic storms like Hurricane Irene and Superstorm Sandy. This measure would provide power service during situations where there were also periodic outages due to accidents and the like. The use of an elevator is a convenience for able-bodied people. But for many of our seniors and dis disabled residents, it's a medical necessity. When seniors are held captive in their unit because their buildings lose power and there's no elevator service, it results in many times with missed appointments, medical appointments, important appointments. In, in fact, life-saving medical appointments and many times related to dialysis and cancer care. Many can't get out to get their prescriptions filled or even to buy groceries. Cognizant of the fact that this is sim not simply a quality of life issue, but a matter of public safety, I reached out to a colleague to our East, Legislator William Spencer. And I worked with him to introduce the bill in Suffolk. And tomorrow, he will lay that bill on the table during a committee meeting in hopes that this adoption and the implementation of this legislation will provide relief to our seniors throughout the Long Island region. We gathered here today in Hempstead, not by coincidence, but by design because it was an issue that occurred over at 400 Fulton Avenue that bubbled up this legislation. So it led me to create this legislation and want to move forward to protect our seniors. And we're going to have a resident later that will speak to the issues that he encountered there. But we're also standing here in Hempstead today because the Hempstead Housing Authority identified that there was an issue and moved forward with corrective action by installing a backup generator that will power the, the elevators during situations when there's a power outage. And so we will also hear from Rosemary Olson at some point to discuss the undertaking of that endeavor in more detail. But at this time, I would like to bring Mayor Wayne Hall to the podium and have him share his thoughts. Thank you. You. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, uh, Legislator Bino and Spencer for introducing this bill. Um, the village had tried to introduce the bill a, a year ago, but something fell through with that. Um, so we, this is an important legislation, especially for our seniors. And Mr. Reed right here would always come to our board meeting and keep prompting us to uh, pass some kind of legislation. So we want to thank you for doing that. Doing Superstorm Sandy, and uh, most recently we had a, a, a generator um, a power outage at uh, 400 uh, Fulton, and there was some patients, not patients, but uh, residents that couldn't get back up to their apartments for nine hours. And I, I, because of that, I think one of them had to go to the hospital. So this legislation is uh, very important. I'm just hoping that uh, both legislators uh, from uh, Nassau and Suffolk uh, will um, pass 
pass this legislation. Thank you. <clears throat> so again, intense major storms are occurring more frequently, and it is time that our code be improved to ensure that our safety, to the safety of our residents. And at this time, I'm going to bring Rosemary Olson to the podium and ask her to speak about the undertaking of the installation of the generator. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the senior and disabled population are um, often very frail, um, sometimes very elderly, and have a lot of mobility-related issues. And also, um, some of them don't have a lot of family. And so when um, something strikes, it, it strikes them very hard. And we, in these, and we have two senior buildings. This is one of them, 20 Cotton, um, where it was very, very difficult. It's, it's a six-story building. It's very difficult for the tenants. And so um, we installed an emergency generator that will power the um, elevators and also the emergency lighting. Um, until um, energy is restored. It's, a, um, it's backed up by natural gas, uh, so we don't have to worry about refilling um, the, uh, the um, tank with diesel, which was a problem during uh, Superstorm Sandy uh, for many, many um, outfits. We're also starting the design process for our other building. We'll be doing the design this spring and hopefully have a generator installed by the fall uh, for that building as well to make them both accessible. What it does is it, it doesn't power everything, but it powers enough um, so a senior can get around um, and in and out of the building and go to medical appointments and family can help them out. Um, and I think it's something that you know every building owner that has senior housing should do. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Reed, if yes. you would, please come and share a little bit about just the situation that occurred at 440. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ron Reed. I am a resident at 400 Fulton and president of the tenant council. Uh, we did have, we've had some problems over the, over the years in regards to the power outage. And when it happened, we'd be without power. And, you know, as they say, seniors are, I'm going to make the choice, seniors are like children. We, when it gets dark, we can't see, we want to know what's going on. We're trying to get around and get, get help. And if you come out into the hall, and the hall is pitch dark. Due to the fact that once the lights go out, you have 90 minutes. Because that's the emergency lighting. I know because I'm, a, I'm an electric, a high electrician. And I know that every one of these buildings have them. And by having a generator, what happens after 90 minutes? If you don't have a generator, a backup generator, the place is completely dark. Since I've been there, since they opened the building, I know, and I've been in the situation where it has been dark like that, not for more than maybe a day or two, but even for eight or nine hours is bad. The last one we just had, as the mayor, <coughs> the mayor said, was in August, and ten days later they found a woman dead. Oh my God! And I'm and I've been fighting. I know, you know, going back, I go to the meetings, and I've been saying. You know, we got to have it, we got to have it. And you know, I know things take time. I know there's other things that has to be done for other people. I understand all of that. But everybody, you got to look at it. Because at some point, one day, we'll all, if we live long, we'll get old and have a chance to hope to retire and enjoy a little bit of something. But if things like this go untaken care, un un looked at and do anything about it, it, it you can forget about the seniors. But they'll be gone. They won't, you won't know nothing. That's knowledge. You can't let it go like that. <clears throat> so I'm asking, please, both of the, you know, for Nassau and Suffolk, we need it. We need it for all of the buildings that have seniors <coughs> that need something like this. You've got to have a generator because you can't go without it. But once the lights are out, which you all know, that's nothing. And there's nothing like being in the dark. And that means even you know, there's other situations that happen when there's no lights, but we won't go into all that. Right now, we need that generator, and then we can deal with everything else at another time. But please, I'm asking, and for the other seniors, because I look at it this way. If you help them, you're helping me. 
That's so right. please do for them. You know, I want to live a long time too, but do for the other seniors. Please. Thank you. Thank you. So again, this is just a common sense legislation that would protect our most vulnerable population here on Long Island. And I'd like to thank my colleagues in government for standing here with me today and also community residents. Uh, we ask that, um, you know, that uh, the legislature consider this bill and pass it with great support. At this time, I'll take any questions that anyone might have. I, just, I have uh, some questions regarding the village of Hempstead's laws and Nassau County laws. Um, it, does the village already have a law in place that you should have? There's they do no not, laws. They at do all. not. Okay. So it's it, the hope is that once this legislation is passed, it will be a requirement for every municipality within the town, within the county of Nassau, okay. to um, be in, in, in compliance with the so law. So currently, hospitals and nursing homes do have generators. That's correct. But not not apartments. senior or disabled designated multi-family dwellings. Uh -huh. And uh, how many of these dwellings are there in Nassau County? Oh, there are considerable amount. Do you of, have there are housing authorities that, in particular, that manage a lot of that t style housing, but there are also private mm -hmm. um, landlords throughout mm -hmm. Nassau County that also provide that type of housing. We, um, we, we can't estimate what that number is for you today. Okay. But like in general, how many seniors or, or, or disabled um, would be affected. Senior or disabled designated. I mean, you can get you can get me that. Well, here in yeah. Hempstead, yeah, we, got, we got about ten. We got about ten here. Maybe about I just, ten facilities. I just know my news director is going to say, mm -hmm. "Well, how many are affected? Is it?" We, <laughs> we did attempt to, to you know, um, gather that information. Unfortunately, because there's so many private landlords that right. operate, you know, multifamily designated senior and disabled housing. We weren't able to capture that information mm -hmm. timely for this. So season. just in Hempstead, I could even say thousands. You say ten. He, he, the ten mayor is estimating maybe ten buildings. Ten buildings. Ten buildings. Um, uh, the other question um, is, I guess this would be at the expense of of the of the building owner. Mm -hmm. yes. That is correct. That mm -hmm. is. Correct. And how much are generators for a building that size? Or? Well, we did some. You know, we did meet with some engineers, but Rosemary might yeah. have. You know, better. Anywhere, anywhere from about 125 to, yeah. and, and that's generating your whole building, right? And your lights and the like, right? So, that's the whole way yeah. It depends upon the size of the building. Yes, it does. It depends on the size of the building. It depends on um, the location where the generator will be actually placed, and then also the trenching and any other construction work that would be undertaken to allow for the gas line to meet the generator. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it can vary from place to place. I had some estimates as low, because I did meet with an engineer to discuss this, as low as forty to 50000 And again, depending on the size of the, the facility, it could go upward. It's a lot of money that you're asking. It is. It's a huge undertaking, but this is not for convenience sake. This is a medical necessity for seniors and disabled you know, individuals who cannot ambulate up and down the stairs on their own, who end up being sure. stranded in and out of their units. Mm -hmm. And so this is a matter really and truthfully of public safety. Mm -hmm. and, but I mean, and, you're probably going to get a pushback on this. I, mean, I suspect. I suspect. You know. I actually met with um, many of the operators of the most, or I should say the least resourced landlords, those being operators of public housing, and many of them were undertaking this initiative anyway because they understand the value of being able to provide elevator services to their seniors. So many of them, despite the fact that, again, they're the least resource, they're the ones with, you know, they don't make uh, a, a huge profit <coughs> by providing this style of housing, they understood the importance and were already undertaking mm -hmm. that endeavor anyway. So many of the other landlords who are providing similar style housing across Long Island are a little better resourced in that they're in the private sector. Not I would the assume sector. though there are so many buildings that already have generators in place as well. I mean, well, you know, listen, you know, uh, from right. what I could ascertain from the conversations from community members and also from other, um, you know, landlords, 
they they don't all they don't have it. They don't have it. Case in point, 400 Fulton, mm -hmm. and um, I know the trustee uh, Figueroa uh, went out to 400 Fulton when the electric was was out of service there, and it was I believe it was in the. You want to step up? Well, when I was called, the lights were out for nine hours at 400 Fulton, um, and so um, uh, with my experience with running generators and installing them and being part of that business with the electric, I was able to call uh, the power authority, and within about an hour, they send a, a crew of switchmen to uh, do some switching on pole lines and get the power back. And so, um, but we 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 had a difficult situation there where the seniors were all in the lobby for nine hours without food. Uh, the mayor was able to get food for them at the time, but we found out a little late, but we, I was able to expedite the uh, power back into the buildings uh, within an hour or so. But uh, definitely needed. It's, it's a pushback, oh, yeah. like you said, but uh, it's something that's... I guess like I'm just trying to figure out how many buildings really need this. Like, how many do we know that are? Well, it, you it, know, I would tell you that, and and I'll go out on a limb here and say that the large majority of this style housing, um, especially providing housing to low income um, residents or disabled individuals that are owned by private landlords, do not have generators in place. And um, you know, listen. These are the most vulnerable individuals who don't have family that live in proximity in many cases, and you know we want to have an opportunity for them to age, you know, in place. Alison, you don't have to give me yeah. the argument. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. I'm just, I'm just trying to get some number, you know. So if you guys can look at. Yeah, that. we're talking about. So if we have, yes. if, if they estimate ten, estimate, at, I would say, ten buildings with an average in Hempstead. of about 100 apartments in each building, 150. Okay, so that's, that's, that's yeah, okay. just houses. in Hempstead Village alone. That's just in Hempstead Village. Okay. And if we look into Great Neck, I know Great Neck has a, a large number of um, rental multifamily dwellings for seniors and disabled individuals. They yeah. also you know, must have the same you know, issue that they encounter. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? Is there any kind of grant that is out there to help, like, a uh, landlord that can't afford their generator to um, to help get the generator just not only for senior, also for disabled family member, you know, like a disabled kid or something? Is there any kind of funding they can go, or some kind of grant they can um, start for? So I can't source those um, grants right now for you, but I do know that you know, in my other life, I provide similar style housing, right? And so we were able to get receive grants to do modifications within the building to ensure the safety of individuals that were physically disabled. So there are grants that are available um, for this type of endeavor, um, in, especially for those that might be federally funded type of um, institutions. Are you a landlord? No, I'm, I'm an employee, so oh. housing authority. Oh. <laughs> just, just come here, you know. Okay. So you. when do you think it will pass, or when do you, is it going to come up in the legislature, you know? When I'm you hoping that we will, you know, be able to have this bill, you know, brought to the floor mm -hmm. at the Nassau County Legislature timely. Um, I know that in Suffolk County, um, Legislator Spencer will be bringing it to committee for discussion tomorrow, and uh, so the hope is that you know, we both counties will be able to move forward and that the, um, the law will actually, when we adopt it, it will give um, the landlords um, time time to be able to be in compliance. But like by the beginning of the year? And it gives them six months from the time that it's... Let me double check. So, six months. Yeah. So when do you, when, I mean, I'm just saying, when do you, are you bringing it before the legislature? So I filed the bill okay. um, last week. Okay. And so now, you know, it's going to be up to the, pres the presiding officer to bring this bill. So whenever the they floor. decide to bring it right. to the floor. And I know that, again, Suffolk is bringing it tomorrow, so they... Um, he's bringing it to a committee. Yeah. He's bringing it to a committee. Yeah, not with, in front. With hopes that it will get to the floor, but it will uh -huh. at least be discussed and debated tomorrow. Right. Okay. So you're hoping by the end of the year this bill will be in place? Or? So I'm an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping Good. that we can, you know, have the healthy debates and discussions about this issue and maybe iron out any concerns that 
you know, might be um, attached to this current bill and have a bill that's ready for adoption, hopefully by June, so that we can, you know, move forward and, and have landlords starting to be in compliance by the beginning of next year. 90 days. I think we're done. Thank you. Thank you.